Guys, remember, a gentleman will always notice her new shoes, put away his own shoes, and always compliment her on her micro jig, maker of the gripper. Work safer, work smarter. The bedrooms in my house are pretty small. Space is at a premium. One of the problem areas has always been right here where I've kept some of my shoes on the floor and it's always a mess. So I decided to build this stand to take care of that problem and to give me some extra storage. It only sticks out a little ways from the wall so I still have room to walk between my bed and it. I began the design of this looking at valets, but I soon realized I I didn't really need to store my suit jacket and tie and pants. So it evolved into what I'm calling a gentleman's stand. Finally, I've got a dedicated spot to keep my shoes off the floor and it's got a couple of drawers for storing knickknacks or whatever. Hey, before I start this project, please take a moment to subscribe to Woodworking for Mere Mortals and be sure to ring that notification bell so you won't miss any of my future videos. I usually like to start projects like this with the top. That way I can pick out the best sections of wood that I have to glue together and make a panel. I'll use my edge joining jig to make sure I have nice square edges for joining these boards together. Really the key to gluing up these large panels is to not tighten the clamps too tight. It doesn't take very much pressure to hold these together. These two boards will help keep the panels flat. Okay, so there's the top and the lower shelf. I'm gonna split this one board into the four legs, but first I need to cut a couple of notches for the dividers. I'm not gonna bother installing my dado blades, I'll just make multiple passes with my regular blade. This piece will be the four connectors for the sides. I'll cut the dados the same way in it. Now I can rip these into the four square legs. And the same for the dividers. I cut this spacer to help me line up the second piece. I'll use my bandsaw to cut out a notch in each corner of the shelf. I'm going to attach the top using pocket screws. I'll drill those holes now. This is going to be a tricky glue up. I need to install these two back pieces and this lower shelf all at the same time, otherwise I'll never be able to get this in.
Well, that was a little bit stressful. I think I got it all. I'm ripping a bunch of thin slats for the shoe rack. I'm gonna use this scrap of plywood to keep the legs separated while I glue the slats in place. These will hold fine with just glue. I don't think any clamping is necessary. I've cut the top down to size and I'm going to screw it into place now. The reason I want to put the top on now is because once I put some runners in here, I'm not going to be able to access these holes, which are already kind of tricky to get to as they are. I've got this right angle attachment from my drill that'll let me put these screws in. I cut these four drawer runners, I'll glue and tack them into place. Making the drawers is simple. I'm gonna start by cutting rabbits on the ends of each of the side pieces. I like to make drawers this way because it's a simple way to get a good fit. Once I get these side pieces cut with the notched ends, all I need to do is measure the distance between those rabbits. Once I've got that measurement, I subtract about a sixteenth of an inch or a millimeter. I'll cut a smaller rabbit along the long edge of each board to hold the bottom of the drawer. Now I can glue these together and install the plywood bases. I like to drop in the drawer bottoms at the same time that I'm gluing up the sides. This helps keep the drawers square. The drawer slides back just a little bit further than the runner, so when I put the face of the drawer on here, the runner itself will act as a stop. These are the two boards that I'm gonna use for the drawer fronts, and I had a decision to make yesterday, and I wanna thank all of you who follow me over on Instagram for helping me out. I wanted you to help me decide, should I use the good side of the boards or each of these boards also has a knot hole in them that I think is kind of cool and adds some character. You might say some, some extra fancy, no, some rustic charm to this cabinet. Anyways, there were over a hundred of you left comments and kind of went half and half, but I think the majority of you wanted to have the knot hole showing. So I'm gonna install these that way. I'll glue the faces on flush with the top of the drawer. Well, that works out pretty good. With this lip under here, there's no need for a drawer pull or knob. You can just reach underneath to pull the drawers out. And I'll apply a few coats of spray lacquer starting with the underside surfaces. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this week's project, the gentleman's stand. I think it's gonna work out really well in this space. It doesn't take up a lot of room and I can get my shoes up off
off the floor. If you'd like to make this project, I've got a free set of plans down in the description. If this is your first time here, I would love to have you subscribe to Woodworking for Mere Mortals, where I post new woodworking videos on Fridays. And take some time to browse through some of my 400 plus other videos on this channel. I have a whole playlist devoted to just some of my furniture projects. I hope you'll enjoy that. And I'd like to remind you to follow me over on Instagram, where you can follow along with my projects throughout the week. And don't forget to follow the Woodworking for Mere Mortals Facebook page. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.